for this tutorial, I'm going to be demonstrating two assault intercessors. And the reason for this is we, we're literally only making kind of one change. Well, a couple of changes between the two. This is a sergeant and this is just a general rank and file man. And the reason we're going to show you both is that because the helmet is different and also how to paint the skin and the shield here and the plasma. Oh, there's a lot more going on in him than I actually initially thought when I started talking. But we're going to show you both of these, uh, both of these guys uh, and how to paint them in this tutorial. So we're going to mostly focus on the sergeant, but when we need to, we'll swap over to the, to the normal guy. So the colour that we're going to start with when we're painting our Blood Angels Assault Intercessors is, of course, the armour. And we're going to be using Blood Angels Red for this. Now, what we want to do is when you're painting power armour with, with contrast paints, you want to make sure that your brush isn't completely overloaded. So you want to make it so it's like it's not dripping, basically, but it's still got a fair amount on there. And then what you do is you basically just in these very careful, considered brush strokes, just paint in the same direction as you can on each panel. So in the case of the foot, like I'm doing here, we're going from left to right. Like that. Just going to keep going. Just following what the model's kind of preaching to me. So, like, hit back here on the foot again, left to right. As you can see, I'm always doing it in exactly the same direction. Start around here. We're going to make contact, pull it around. Still going left to right. Like that. Similarly on the front panel. Make contact over here. And then we just pull the contrast paint round. Always trying to go in the same direction. Just using the brush to kind of pull off any excess that we've added. It's a little bit too much there, so I'm just gonna use my brush like that just to smooth it out a little bit. Like this, and so we just wanna keep going around, effectively taking it a panel at a time. So like here on the back of the leg, just make contact up there. We're just going up and down here. Making sure that we're working it into all those recesses, like this. And then on the circles, just putting the brush into the dome, into the recess of the dome, just kind of following it around in a circular way. Like that. Same again on the other side. Too much paint. Go into the recess, follow it around. like that. And this is how you just get that really nice smooth finish with the contrast paints. So on the front panel of the leg here, we want a little too much paint. We'll start at the top, just using a big broad brush stroke, top to bottom, always top to bottom. I'm just using my brush to pull off any excess that I see where it's like too heavy. Like for example, here along the edge. You just want to be very gentle with it. Like that. Just 
As you can see, I'm very much just taking it panel at a time. I'm not trying to rush it. So they get this really nice smooth finish with the contrast paint. One of the keys here is to move the model around so that you can do the strokes in the same direction comfortably. It's like in the instance of that leg there, the top part of that leg, I'm going left to right. So I want to move the model so I can comfortably hold the brush and do it. Rather than trying to wiggle my wrist around. And if you leave any areas like I've done there by accident on the inside of the leg panel, it's best to just wait until it's dry and then just go back and touch it up. Because if you try and do it now whilst it's still drying, you might break the skin of the stuff that's around it and get a nasty, nasty little mark on your model when you do that. Particularly with these contrast paints. The same thing happens like if you see a big pool of shade too late so you try and kind of move it off with your brush and then you just kind of get that little bubble like little skin has developed it's too late to save it so you end up with a absent circle where the drip is when you're trying to pull it off it's the same thing with contrast but like everywhere with contrast like this, I'm still just slightly longer take than normal. But I really wanted to show this in progress for you. As you can see here, it's still drying. But what we'll do is we'll just use a teeny little bit of Blood Angels Red like that along the edge, just to color that in. Same down here. And again, on the other side as well. Like that. And once all that Blood Angels red is dry, you can see we've got two, well, pretty nicely red armoured individuals. So before we do any highlights to the armour, what we're actually going to do is we're going to move on and paint the rest of the details before we do the rest of the highlights. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the black. Now, it's slightly different on uh, this guy because we've got to do his shoulder pads. Um, but fundamentally it's the same thing. So we're gonna do this in two different sections. We're gonna do the shoulder pads and then we're gonna do all the black details. So the first thing we do when we're painting this guy's shoulder pads is we take our pot of Basilicanum Gray and our medium layer brush. And then using this Basilicanum Gray, we just paint this all over the inside of the shoulder pad, just being careful when we get close to that red. And we don't need this to be too smooth because we just want this to be a really dark black surface. So it doesn't matter too much about making sure that this first coat is a super smooth one like we did with the Blood Angels Red. Once that Basilicanum Grey is dry, it's now time to paint in the rest of the black details. And the reason we haven't done Basilicanum Grey on like the pouches and stuff is because we don't want them to be really dark. We want the contrast to do most of the work for us. So what we do now is we take our black Templar and we paint this all over those black details, including, as I say, on these shoulder pads. So we just want a nice, dark, ominous coat here. And again, you just want to be really careful when you get close to that. Blood Angel's red, so as not to accidentally splodge it all over that red that we've already painted in. Like this. So we just keep going. until we get the whole thing 
covered. Like that. Then I've got a nice dark shoulder pad. We can move on and do the rest of the details. And so this includes things like the Aquila, his pouches and the soft joints in his armor, as well as the casings on his weapons. And again, we're just being really careful every time we get close to that armor. Missed a bit of Blood Angels Red there. How unprofessional of me. No matter. I'll just block it in after this. Like so. So we've got the Aquila done on his, on his chest and his first shoulder pad. We'll do the second one in a minute. But when we're painting something like the chainsword, what we want to do is take a fair dollop of this on our brush and then just at the base of the chainsaw, we make contact and just put it all the way down like this. And just these big, broad brush strokes. Doesn't matter if you get the Black Templar on the teeth because those are going to be silver. And we can just paint over those with the metallic paints. Similarly again, big broad brush stroke all the way down. Like that. And with all that Black Templar applied, now we're going to do the silver details. We're just going to wait to finish his helmet because effectively we want to get all of the generic details done first and then we'll go and do, you know, specific things for each one. So, the next thing we're going to do, as I said, is we're going to paint all the silver details. And the colour we're going to be using for this is some thinned down iron warriors. And so this is for all the areas like the teeth of the chainsword and the working mechanisms of the chainsword. So like here and on here. We also want to use this on his prosthetic hand and all the mechanical parts of the gun. We can do it just here, as well as this device here and the barrel. We also want to use these Iron Warriors on the vents of the backpack and these little bits here, as well as the little vents on the helmet on his belt. With all that silver applied, it's now time to colour in the gold details. And so what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the sergeant because he's got the most. So the gold details using this retributor armour are the pommel of the sword down here. And the little icon on his gauntlet. As well as the helmet. This is just for the sergeant. Only the sergeant has a gold helmet. as well as this little bit on each of the holsters and the coils on the underside of the plasma gun. 
With that retributor armor applied, the next thing we're going to do is paint in all the purity seals. And the first color we're going to do is work on all the parchment. Now these are scattered across all of the assault intercessors. Some have them, some don't, but there's usually one hiding somewhere. So on the sergeant, we've got one here. And on the assault intercessor, there's one just there on his gun. We're also going to be using the same color for the sergeant's hair. And the color we're going to be using is skeleton horde. So we take some of this on our brush, like that. And then we just paint this all over the paper, like that. Just taking off any big, large, dark blobs. You just want to make sure you get the underside as well. And just up against the, the edge as well. Like that. Just pull off that blob again. Similarly for the hair, just want to take a small amount and paste this all over, including where the hairline meets the scalp. Because when we do the skin, the two will blend together quite nicely. And next up, once that parchment is dry, we're going to use some Magos Purple. And this is just for the wax seal. And with that wax seal done, you'll now notice that the only thing that remains is the helmet, the lenses, and a couple of little pipes that are sometimes seen scattered around some of these miniatures. Uh, before we do any shading and that. Otherwise, we're very, very close to having a, a, a nearly ready Space Marine. So what we're going to do is we're going to paint the helmet on the Assault Intercessor. Now, any of your kind of general line, line infantry for the Assault Intercessors will have this color helmet. They will have a yellow helmet because they're fast attack helmets. Apparently, even though they come as troops, they still wear fast attack helmets. So the color we're going to be using to paint this yellow helmet is a Yandan yellow. And what we do is we take a fair wallop of this on our brush, almost kind of that much. And what we want to do is very quickly, because we don't want this to dry or create a line, we want to just paint this all over the helmet. So we just want to get this yand and yellow on there, like this. And you generally only need one brush load to do it, because you just want to move that yand and yellow around. And when you get too much yand and yellow, it becomes quite orangey. And similarly for our Assault Intercessor Sergeant, we're going to use Gilliman Flesh to colour in his skin. And what we want to do is we want to always run from recess to recess. So if you want to start by the hair and go down to the chin, or start by the chin and go up to the recess. So you want to do it like this, where you just kind of make contact with the model here and just put it down in one brush stroke with the Gilliman flesh. Like that. And you want to go reasonably quick around the front because you don't want any mysterious lines appearing where the contrast dries. And with that done, we're now well on our way to finishing off these intercessors. So what we're going to do now is we're actually just going to focus on the sergeant for a little while because we've got the shield and we've got the plasma to do. Uh, and the place we're going to start is with the plasma. Uh, and the colour we're going to be using for this is Talisar Blue. And what we're going to do is just take a little bit of Talisar Blue, like this, and just paint this all over the blue coils like this. It doesn't matter too much if you get a little bit of this on the black. It'll just look like that's kind of the after effect of the of the of the glow. And so next up we're gonna work on that shield. Now brace yourselves <laughs> for those of you who are brave enough to do this, 
You could just paint the whole thing red if you wanted to and then stick a transfer on there. Or you could do what I'm about to do, which is to do some freehand. So what we want to do is we want to draw a line going down the middle of the shield like this. You want to do the same thing again, just joining up. Those lines using this Blood Angels Red, like that. And then next up, we want to draw a line going across the shield to create a cross. Like so. Give your brush a quick wash. And then using the Blood Angels Red, you want to very carefully and very smoothly just colour in this bottom left and the top right quadrants. And then next up on the shield, we want to use a small amount of Yandan Yellow. I'm going to use this to draw in some teardrops. I'm going to do this in the top left quadrant. So you just want to carefully draw a teardrop like this. And lastly, just to finish off the freehand part of this uh, shield, I'm going to use a small amount of Black Templar to draw a bar going across diagonally here. You just want to use a, leave a tiny little bit of that white showing. Like that. And then we just want to black that, black that in. And then next up, just to finish off that shield, we're going to use a small amount of Apothecary White. Just, that's a little bit too much. Just to bring down the colour of those still remaining white sections. Like that. Because Apothecary White is quite see-through, it doesn't matter too much if you get a little bit of it on the black or indeed on the yellow. So we're only using a small amount. And next up, still sticking with the sergeant, we're going to use a small amount of flayed one flesh just to apply some highlights to his face. So what we want to do is we want to add this flayed one flesh to his, like the bridge of his nose, his brow. His cheeks, his cheekbones, top of his lip, effectively any of the raised areas that you can now see courtesy of the contrast paint. Like this. And next up we want to take a small amount of wild wood really tiny amount and around the bottom eyelid just add this wildwood like that the impression of some bags under his eyes. 
And next up we want to use a teeny tiny bit of wraith bone. This is just to paint in the whites of his eyes. Like this. You can also use this as a good opportunity to paint in the teeth. And next up, we want to use a really small amount of Black Templar here, just to give him the pupils of his eyes. Like that. And the very last detail is to use a really small amount of Volupus pink. And this is just for his tongue. And lastly, we want to use a small amount of Wraithbone just to apply some highlights to the hair. And you can almost kind of approach this like pointillism, just dab it on like this. Not very many, just enough to give it some variation. Continuing with the theme of unique details, we're going to use a little bit of phalanx yellow just to highlight the yellow helmet on our trooper. So you want to pick out the sharpest edges of the helmet. And lastly, just to finish off these unique details, we're going to use a small amount of Corax White. And this is just for the corners of these plasma coils. Like that, so give it a real glow. And with that, we're now ready to apply some shades to the miniature and finally start to finish these guys off. Now, the reason we haven't done the grips of the swords or any of these pipes yet is because they're going to be the same colour as the lenses on the helmet. We want to do the helmet shading before we do that, so we do blah, 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 so we don't end up repeating ourselves a lot. So, the first colour we're going to use to shade is Basilicatum Grey, and this is going to be for all the silver and all of the gold materials. And actually, that's the only shade we're doing. I don't know why I said it's the first colour. So we're just going to take this Basilicatum Grey and we're going to paint this all over the silver and all over the gold across both of the miniatures like that. On the helmet we just want to be a little bit careful particularly on this gold helmet we don't want to do this on the yellow helmet we just want to use big broad brush strokes just to basically darken that helmet down and apply some shading into the darkest areas but also so that you don't get like these dark patches on the flat of the helmet. So just being a bit careful when we're doing it here. We want to make sure we get this basilicarum grey all over. And once all that basilicarum grey is dry, we're going to use some Liberator Gold to highlight all of the gold details. And so what we do is we take our Thinned down Liberator Gold. We pick a gold detail to start on. And I'm going to start here on the sword pommel. We just pick out the sharpest edges with this Liberator Gold like that. And with that Liberator Gold applied, we're now going to move on and do the silver highlights. So the colour we're going to be using for this is some thinned down Iron Hand Steel. So we just want to take the iron hand still, pick out all the sharpest areas and edges on all the silver details. And with all that silver done, we can now do the eyes, the pipes, and the grips of the sword. And the colour we're going to use for this is orc flesh. So we take a small amount of our orc flesh on our brush 
and we just paint this all over these details. Like that. Similarly for the eye, we don't want to use too much on our brush at once because we don't want to splodge it all over the place. Just basically want to drop this hawk flesh in there over the colour that's already there because don't worry, we'll give it a highlight to brighten it up. And once that hawk flesh is dry, we want to use a small amount of moot green just to draw a line going across. the lens like that and all that remains for the lens is just to do a small dot of Corax white in the top corner like that just to give it that impression of the light shining on the lens and with that the models are effectively complete now you could leave it there if you wanted to but we're not going to what we're going to do is we're going to just to do a little, a couple few things to the armor, just to kind of give it a little bit more shine in line with the rest of the high quality details that we've already painted. So the color that we're going to use is some thin down Fire Dragon Bright. And this is just to add a bit of a spot highlight to all of the sharpest edges, including places like on these rivets here, around the gorget. Like that. And across any of the kind of prominent hard details that you can see. So you've got like areas like the top of the shield and around his knee plates. Areas like this. Just want to go around picking out these areas with the fire dragon bite bright and then we'll come back and there you have it with some strategically placed fire dragon bright highlights on the sharpest edges and corners we get this beautiful looking blood angels red armor so all that remains to do on these chaps is to base them now i'm going to be doing them in the same scheme as the rest of my blood angels army and that involves doing the nuclear wasteland bases and as you can see i've finished off these bases in the nuclear wasteland style which you can see that tutorial available here on this youtube channel i really enjoyed painting these blood angels intercessors they're just they're just such dynamic models and the poses are fantastic and i'm really excited for the direction of the new space marines i hope you enjoyed this one and found any of these techniques useful like comment subscribe do all that great stuff and i'll see you soon in the next one.